Hi, Dr. Thomas, this is Elise Kiuna. And for week seven, um, my debate topic, I chose to compare and contrast the health insurance, medical care and cost control for the United States versus Australia. Um, if you look at my slide, my topics for Australia are highlighted in blue and the green are the United States. I chose Australia because my health policy brief topic has been about HPV and mandating the vaccine across the board for seventh graders. Um, Australia's already done that. They did that over 10 years ago and they've had great results. Um, cervical cancer could potentially be eliminated in Australia within the next two decades because of the government program. And they're estimating that by 2028, fewer than four women in every 100,000 could be diagnosed with cervical cancer annually in Australia effectively eliminating the disease as a public health problem, which is amazing. So they're doing great things. But to talk about the health insurance and medical care costs for America, um, we have out of pocket payers, very expensive option, then there's individual private insurance, where two transactions are taking place, typically a premium payment from the individual to an insurance plan and a payment from the insurance plan to the provider. Then there's employment-based private insurance where employers pay a portion of the premium that purchases the health insurance for their employee. And last, there's government financing, Medicare and their various parts for the elderly and then Medicaid, which is a program run by the states that is funded by federal and state taxes to pay for care of low income people. All of these programs came about to fix problems that happened during history. So that's what we have now. Um, general practitioners are available here, of course. We have tons and tons of specialists and people can see specialists as they choose um, given the allowances of their insurances or their ability to pay. Um, we have disparities here, of course. Disparities for the US are racially based typically with minorities having less access to private health insurance and care in general. This is all in opposition to Australia, where they have a universal public health insurance program they call Medicare that is financed through the general tax revenue and a government levy. It's in management with the cooperation of federal, state, and local government. All citizens, permanent residents, and certain visa holders are eligible to receive care. There is also a high emphasis on general practitioners and preventative care there. Specialists are available, but they're seen on a waitlist basis. Um, and sometimes these wait lists can take a while. People can be on the wait list for days, weeks, months, even years. Um, sometimes to combat this though, 57% of Australians choose to get private health insurance, which can, which can supplement allied health services, optometry and dental, as well as allow them access to private hospitals and reduce the wait times on the list. Um, typical, um, typically here in America, our insurance plans include dental and vision while in Australia, they do not, it is something extra. The disparities there in Australia, they're um, more about remoteness. The Aboriginal population, due to their remoteness, they have a lack of access to medical facilities. There are government programs in place, one such called Royal Flying Doctor Service, which um, periodically sends doctors out to these remote areas to do preventative and wellness care, which is a nice thing. Um, in regards to costs, in 2020, the US healthcare spending reached 4.1 trillion, which averaged 12,500 per person. Um, that's just a lot of money. The federal government control costs by setting provider rates for Medicare and the VA, negotiating drug prices for the VA and things like that. However, most Americans have private health insurance anyway. So there's a limited options for the federal government to kind of regulate things. State governments try to control costs by regulating private insurances, setting Medicaid provider fees, developing preferred drug lists, negotiating lower drug costs and things like that. Opposition is Australia in 2020, their total spending for healthcare was 202.5 billion, equaling approximately 7,926 per person, which is significantly less. The federal government um, regularly considers actions to reduce spending growth in the Medicare benefit scheme throughout its annual budget process. And they also do this as well for their uh, pharmaceutical benefits scheme costs where they try to determine about which pharmaceuticals to list on the scheme and negotiate the prices with suppliers. Um, 
it, states are required to cover the remaining costs of services providing an incentive to keep costs at an all time low. Um, and also beyond these measures, healthcare costs are controlled mainly through capacity constraints such as workforce supply. So all in all, Australia is doing good things in regards to healthcare. Um, and then preventative care is huge. The average life expectancy here in the United States is 74.5 years of age for males, 80.2 for females. While Australia has 81.2 for males and 85.3 for females. So they're doing something that is adding to the life expectancy, which is great. In 2018, 28 million Americans were uninsured during that year. That I guarantee was not the case in Australia because of the universal um, plan. And the United States spends a fair amount more per person on healthcare annually than Australia does. And Australia also has a more cohesive alliance between their various government levels and entities in place to ensure programs are run smoothly as opposed to American healthcare coverage, which has too many moving parts. So all in all, I think we can learn a lot from Australian healthcare and medical care and control cost, and hopefully implement some of those that we, they have there into our system. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.